Good morning, dear friends. This is Bishop John Quinn of the Diocese of Winona, Rochester, and I welcome you to this televised liturgy. Good morning and welcome to the Church of St. Mary's here in Winona. I'm Father John Evans and assisting at Mass today is Deacon Bob Yerthoff. We are from the Church of the Crucifixion in La Crescent and St. Patrick's in Brownsville. This fourth Sunday of Lent, we've gathered in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, to better prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind the ways we have sinned. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant we pray that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebration to come. Your Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the princes of Judah, the priests, and the people added infidelity to infidelity practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messengers to them, for he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings and scoffed at his prophets until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all its palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. Until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbaths, during all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest, while seventy years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom by both word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord, the God of heaven has given to me. And he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever therefore among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. Zion, only us 
Chorus, urged us to be joyous, sing for us the songs of Zion. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. How could we sing a song of the Lord in a foreign land if I forget you? Jerusalem, may my right hand be forgotten. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. May my tongue cleave to my palate if I remember you not. If I place not Jerusalem, A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God, who is rich in mercy because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved, raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you, it is the gift from God, and is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance, that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world but people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We just heard in the second reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians, for by grace you've been saved through faith, and this is not from you, it is a gift from God. In this short reading, we heard the word grace spoken of three times, grace, the gift from God. 
and that during the season of Lent, we recognize it is a season of grace as well as a season that is a gift of God to draw closer to your son Jesus Christ by acts of fasting, prayer, and almsgiving. Many years ago, I was at a meeting with our ministerial association, and I came in a bit late, and I, I'm all upset. It was Ash Wednesday, busy, busy, busy. And I said, oh, Lent, it's Lent again. And this one pastor, Protestant pastor said, oh, I would think you'd love Lent. I said, why? He said, you're so lucky to have the season of Lent, a time of 40 days of intensive prayer, a time of walking with the Lord Jesus Christ. In my faith tradition, we do not have a season called Lent. And I envy you. I wish I had that because not only do you have that time of intense prayer, the sense of reaching out to others in charity, you go it not alone, but with people in your church community, in your larger diocese, and throughout the world. That indeed is a season of grace, which is a gift from God. You walk together and you walk a closer walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. In conclusion, we hear Paul write as well in the letter to Ephesians. Because of the great love God had for us, he brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved. I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God and God, light from light, true God and true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom we have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins, I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer these prayers of petition. For the leaders of the church, may Christ, the source of their wisdom, strengthen their hearts as they teach God's law in our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. hear our prayer. For national and local leaders, may God strengthen them in honor and integrity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the suffering, and those who live in the darkness of fear, may God bring them the light of his healing and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who care for the sick, especially for those near death, may they be a radiant sigh of God's abiding love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for this faith community. May God help us to live our faith more abundantly in order to bear good fruit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the religiously professed, especially for the Rochester Franciscan sisters, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, May they experience the joy and light of heaven with all those who have gone before us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Gracious God, hear these our prayers we offer in the name of your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable by God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting the salvation of all the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world so as to hold rather to the things they eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed our holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At a time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, giving you thanks. 
He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, bring the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and John our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. The Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, the Glorious Martyrs, St. Lawrence, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And as the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom come, thy thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and gracious grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all distress as we wait the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Like not our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O oh God, enlighten everyone who comes into this world. Illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing in your majesty and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go oh, in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you for joining us for this Sunday's televised Mass. I hope it has brought you spiritual joy and comfort this day. If this Mass has helped you or someone you know, please consider sending a donation to the address on the screen or by visiting our website at dowr.org and clicking the weekly mass icon. Thank you and God bless. Your voice speaks deep within.